here we've got a start question um, so it's obviously going to involve quite a bit of working out and some uh, written explanations in words to kind of conclude what we think the answer is going to be that they wanted us to work out so we look at the uh, context of the question to try and uh, look at what maths we're going to be using so it's talking about a container and it's talking about the fact that it's a cuboid well that's kind of giving us a clue that we might be working with volume in some way or area in some way so we look at uh, that's the rest of the question we can see we've got a container of a cuboid shape and we've got some boxes of certain dimensions uh, what do they want they want to fill the container with the boxes so literally we're trying to kind of look at how many of these boxes are going to fit into this container that's literally what the question's kind of asking us to think about. So each box is in centimetres. Well, we've got centimetres here and we've got metres here. So the first thing we've got to remember is that if we've got two different units, usually the easiest thing to do is to convert. So if we look at the box, I look at the container, then we change metres into centimetres. So 10 metres is going to be 1,000 centimetres. The reason we know that is 1 metre is the same as 100 centimetres, so we've times by 100. So we know this dimension is the same as 1,000 centimetres. And we do the same for the other dimensions, so 4 metres was the width of the container, so 4 times 100, 400 centimetres. And the height of the container, well it was originally 5 metres, 5 times 100, 500 centimetres. Now they're saying they're going to fill the container with the boxes so usually the quickest way of doing this kind of problem is rather than work out the actual volume of the container and the volume of the box and share them to get how many of those will fit in it's usually quicker to just look at how many boxes you can fit along the bottom and then look at what happens for the bottom layer and then multiply up by how many layers you can get within the container itself so if we look at the box it's got a 50 centimetre length so if we do a thousand divide by 50 so dividing um, with multiples of 10 means we can divide both of those by 10 to start with so that means go down a place value so we're saying how many fives are there in a hundred well that'll be 20 so we know that this way we can fit 20 boxes if we look at the 400 dimension, then 400 divided by 50, again divide both of these by 10 and we can make an easier sum, so 40 divided by 5 is 8. So this way we can fit 8 boxes. And that then tells us on the bottom layer we could fit 20 times 8 boxes. So we could fit 160 boxes along the bottom layer. Um, okay, so we check this through and realise we made a mistake because the width of the box was actually 40, not 50. So we change that to 40. So 40, 40 divided by 4 is actually 10. So always check your working as you go through. So we've got 20 times 10 was actually 200. So we're going to have 10 along that width. So the bottom layer is actually going to be 200. So if we work out uh, how many layers we can get in the box, then they're saying that the height of the box itself is 20. So we're going to do 500 divided by 20. So again, divide both of them by 10. 50 divided by 2, 25. So we could actually stack up 25 layers so that means we're going to end up doing 200 times 25 to find the total number of containers in there, sorry, boxes within the container. Well, doing these kind of sums, 2 times 25 is 50, but then we've got to deal with the fact that uh, this is 200, so we have to multiply by 100 now. So 50 times 100, again, multiplying by 100 moves everything up two base values, so we'll end up with 5,000. So what we've shown is, because the question said show that Mark can put no more than 5,000 boxes into the container, 
we found the maximum number of boxes is 5,000 so we can say only 5,000 boxes will fit. Again a start question so we really ought to be concluding with a sentence so only 5,000 boxes will fit and then we can do a little arrow to show where we got the number from. Okay, so like I did here really important we check that we've used all of the correct numbers and show all our workings out so that we can get all the marks possible for a start question. Four marks are quite a high scoring question.